da 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 Street, a monstrous hit for Jerry Rafferty back in 1978. And I played that song straight off the chord charts of the Marstown Uke Jam. So check the link in the video description, download the free ukulele chord charts, and you can play along with Baker Street. <clears throat> okay, so now that I've played through the song, what I'm going to do now is go through it now and go, uh, review all of the chords that were involved in this song. Uh, we'll talk a bit about the strum pattern. And also, uh, you probably noticed uh, that I just sort of sang that iconic sax run, you know, that sax line in Baker Street. Uh, it is playable on ukulele, um, so I will show you if you are of a mind to try to do the the lead sax run while someone else is playing the rhythm. I'll show you how to play that. And again, that is also charted that the, the sax run, how to play it is shown on that ukulele chord chart from the Morristown Uke Jam. So let's start with the chords. <clears throat> There's a total of, uh, I see 10 chords here. Let's look at them. 
Uh, the first chord that shows up is a D. Fairly familiar chord, I think, to all of you. Two, 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 zero, with your index, middle, and ring fingers like that. That's a D. The next chord that appears is an F chord. Two, zero, one, zero. Middle finger, open string, index finger, open string. That's an F chord. The next chord I want to talk about is a C chord. You all know that one, right? Zero, 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 three. That's the C chord. The next chord that appears here is an A seventh with a suspended fourth. Sounds like a fancy chord, but it's very, very easy to play. It's zero, two, zero, zero. You know, some of you, most of you are probably familiar with A seventh, which would be this, which does not appear in this song. But instead of that, instead of zero, one, zero, zero, it's zero, two, zero, zero. So it's a very simple chord. G appears throughout this song. Zero, two, three, two. Index finger, ring finger, middle finger. The next chord that appears is an E minor. E minor is played this way with an open fourth string, fourth fret here with your ring finger, third fret on the second string with your middle finger, and second fret on the first string with your index. Okay. An A chord appears in this song. Two, one, zero, zero. That's familiar to all of you as well. Middle finger there, index finger there. That's an A. An A minor is in this song. So if this is your A, two, one, zero, zero, the way to make it an A minor is just lift that index finger off there. So now it's two, zero, zero, zero. There's A, there's A minor. Now, the last two chords I want to show you <clears throat> are a D with a suspended second and a D with a suspended fourth. Because there's a little run in this song where it goes from D, it goes like this. Little progression. You're trying, you're trying now. And so all you do if this is your regular D chord, to get the D with the suspended second, you just lift that ring finger off. So now it's two, two, zero, zero. And to get to the, from the D to the D suspended fourth chord, you add your pinky to the second string third fret. So instead of it being two, 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 zero, it's two, two, three, zero. And that little sequence is, you're trying, you're trying now. So it's actually pretty simple. Again, it's, an, it's a number of chord changes there, but they're all within, it's, it's just. So it's pretty easy. It's all based around the, that D chord, just going to the suspended second and then going to the suspended fourth. So those are the chords involved in Baker Street. Um, let's talk a little bit about the strum pattern. It's pretty consistent throughout the song. I was, let me just strum a little bit, then I'll slow it down and show you what I was doing.
I'm hearing that is one, two, one, two, three, four, 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 one. And the way I found myself playing it is that first one, two, I was doing with down strokes. And then I followed it that the sort of one, two, one, two, three, four. I was doing down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. And again, that's not the only right way to play. Whenever it comes down to a choice of down strokes and up strokes, it really comes down more to what you're comfortable with. There's nothing, you know, just because I found it comfortable to do down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, doesn't mean that's going to be the way, way that works for you. But that basic rhythm, the one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, works pretty well with this song. One, winding your way down Baker Street, light on your head and dead on your feet. Well, another busy day, you drink the night away and you talk about everything. So it's one, two. And that's pretty consistent throughout the whole song. The song does not change rhythm in any significant way throughout the song. So that's the strum pattern. Again, for me, it was down, down, up, up, down, up. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Now, as I said before, if you, you know, if you watch me play through the song at the beginning of this video, I sang that iconic sax solo. But if you are inclined to learn the individual notes of that sax solo, I'm going to, I'm going to show you uh, how to do it. And again, there's a chart showing you how to do it on the chord chart from the Morristown Uke Jam. Let me do the first few notes. Let me sh that first note is the fifth fret here on the third string. And then the next note is way up here, the eighth fret of the first string. Then it goes down to the seventh fret, then down to the fifth fret. You notice my finger is already sort of planted there from that. Watch that again. Do it one more time. This note here, here, down to the seventh fret, down to the fifth fret, all on the first string, then down to the second string. And then the next group of notes starts the same way. Starts with that same note, third string, fifth fret. The only difference is that last note. So watch the first 10 notes now. So the first five notes, the last note of that group is on this string, the first string. The second time around, that last note is on the fifth fret of the second string. Next group of notes is again starts the, sort of the same. I'm sorry, it starts on this. Instead of starting on the third string, you start in the second string. Let me show you that again. First note is here, the fifth fret of the second string. Then that eighth fret again. 7th fret, 5th fret, so there's 5 consecutive notes on this 8th fret of the, and then the last group here is sort of a repeat of that last one, started on the 2nd string again. Seventh fret, 
fifth fret, eighth fret of the second string. So that's the whole, that you play that, that whole sequence I just did, you play twice. Now the second time you play through that whole group of notes, you finish it off with a little riff, like the sax just sort of heads downward to, toward the song. And I'll show you how that goes. Watch that, I'll, I'll show that to you again. Here's the last group of notes. And here's a eighth fret, second string, fifth fret, second string, seventh fret, third string, fifth, sprit, fifth um, fret, and then down to the second fret of the third string. So that's, again, a ukulele is not a saxophone. It's not going to duplicate that iconic sax run exactly. But again, there's, you can play it that way and it'll sound pretty good, especially if someone else is doing the rhythm below there. And you can play Baker Street with both the sax and it's just with the underlying chord rhythm with two players. So again, Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty. I hope you enjoy playing this song.